Hi, I'm Adam Benzion with Edge Impulse. Hi, I'm Jenny Plunkett with Edge Impulse. Hi, Jenny. And awesome to be here today with the Adobe uh, Cold Fusion Summit. Uh, we have something special for you today. Uh, I know that, generally speaking, this event is targeting lots of designers and web developers and cloud developers, but we have something special for you today. Something that touches hardware and electronics and something that makes magical experiences happen. And we'll give you a, a quick overview of who we are as a company, the things that we do. And Jenny is going to show you a real demo and real applications of how we actually get to do things. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this. And we are going to get started. I'll share my screen. And tell you a little bit about Edge Impulse. So Edge Impulse is a young company from Silicon Valley. We're located in San Jose. And it, the company started by two super nerds from ARM that really want to make things smarter, making hardware smarter. And um, the company is almost two years old and we've built some really, really cool tools that are accessible for any developer of any level around the world. We're actually making things so much easier that the different types of uh, workloads and processes that previously took weeks or days to do, you can now achieve them in minutes. And I'll tell you also at the end of this uh, presentation, how you can actually also uh, try a Gimpulse in minutes without even having any specific hardware by simply scanning a QR code with your phone, Android or iPhone, and actually uh, get started and become your own embedded developer within minutes. So as I mentioned, I'm here with uh, Jenny Plunkett, our senior uh, DevRel engineer, and I'm Adam Benzion, uh, the CXO at Edge Impulse. So Edge Impulse is the leading embedded ML platform. That, but that we mean that we are working with hardware, with electronics, and we're able to make edge devices think. We're able to embed um, machine learning models on hardware to uh, allow it to work with sensors and all sorts of audio, uh, video in motion to understand how the physical world around it works and to help it actually think, react, and do all sorts of autonomous things uh, against a set of instructions that we tell the hardware to do. So it's really a promising new field that really uh, drive a lot of the magical experiences that we see in the world. For example, I'm wearing an aura ring. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about this company. Uh, the aura ring is a little uh, wearable uh, full of really micronized electronics and uh, a tiny battery. And it's doing a lot of what we call inferencing on the edge, on the ring. There's no, there's no cloud, cloud connection here. There's not a lot of, uh, there's no radios here besides Bluetooth. Um, so everything that uh, Aura does, including measuring my heartbeat, my oxygen level and temperature and, and even sleep uh, status and rates and quality, all of it happens on the ring. And much of it is happening due to edge impulse. So we help the Aura ring and the electronics and the components within it to actually do a lot of thinking and uh, therefore creating magical experiences. So in general, uh, what we do here, we give hardware brains, we give it personality, we give it wings and we make it sing. So we'll show you how it's done. And again, we'll show you how you can also uh, tap into this and build your first um, uh, machine learning model on your iPhone uh, later on. Um, and from here, I'm actually put, I'm gonna pass it on to Jenny. I'll stay on and uh, Jenny will walk you through the journey of Edge Impulse and also the journey of uh, electronics and hardware and how many devices are out there in the world and the things that we can do with them. Um, and we'll uh, also be around for Q and A uh, later on at the end of this session. Take it away, Jenny. Great, thanks, Adam. Then we can cut this part out when I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so since 1991, um, sort of the dawn of the computer computing era, um, IoT devices have been and constantly increasing throughout the world. And an IoT device, essentially anything that's connected to the internet, that's sending data um, about what it's doing. So since 2017, there's been 100 billion chips, 100 billion IoT devices shipped. And it's expected to further increase from 2020, 2021 on. So there's so many devices, so much data, um, and a lot of these devices actually include sensors on them that include um, 
um, various data that is important to what is happening on the device. We could think of this as an IoT device like a refrigerator or a watch or an aura ring that Adam just described. All of these devices have sensors on board that are constantly collecting data. So this is a lot of data. And right now, um, because this is just a new field of embedded ML, a lot of this data is actually not even being used at all. So how can we leverage this data and actually do things and um, learn from the data that we're collecting from these IoT devices, since there's so many of them? So taking it back a few steps, um, in a more simple example, um, from, a from a typical industrial IoT device, if we're looking at just gathering the temperature of the outside world, you have all this temperature data over time. For example, it could be four Celsius in the morning and 10 Celsius in the evening. You have all these data points in between the morning and the evening, um, and you could use these data points to gather insights. But instead, all you're really getting is an IoT device that is sending you the peak points of your temperature data at specific points in time, rather than specific smart insights like, oh, it was colder in the morning because there was cloud clouds overhead, or it's colder because it's the season of the year. Um, at this moment in time, a typical industrial IoT device that's taking temperature, it's just taking the temperature. It's not doing anything else. How can we get insight out of this data rather than just sending massive amounts of meaningless data to the cloud? So we can think about this in even, even more broad perspective as well. There's tons of information in the world. There's tons of devices collecting this information. Um, there might not even be some devices collecting some of this, these types of information yet. So how can we actually gather insights? Um, what are my environment's current conditions? How can I evaluate the temperature, humidity, various levels in the outdoor world to make any smart insights about this information? Um, how can I use this environment data to um, make another device do sort of another thing in response to this data? Um, how can I use a camera sensor to detect whether I see a certain animal in the, in the frame? Uh, I can use embedded ML to say, hey, there's actually an elephant here. Maybe you should go check it out. Um, and this is re really valuable in terms of wildlife conservation for various poachers, et cetera, um, for detecting when poachers are near or detecting when an elephant is a, uh, in view of the camera. I could also use this for crowd control. And in places like trains, um, train stations, there's a lot of people standing in line. I can use embedded machine learning to detect all of the people that are in frame of a camera and basically determine how many people are in line. Uh, and this is a lot of valuable information that we can take from just very simple sensor data. Um, and all of this can be done directly on the edge without having to send all of this data into the cloud. Sending all of this raw data, like camera images um, and temperature and humidity data, that's a, that's a lot of bulky information. I don't want to have to send all of that information into the cloud when I can just do, make all these inferences and insights directly on the device instead. This is also great for security purposes. For people who are standing in line, they don't necessarily want their pictures of their faces being sent to the cloud. Instead, let's just, take, let's just say, hey, we know this is the person because we're seeing their face. Say that as a number, increase by one, and analyze on the device instead of having to send that up all up into the cloud, uh, potentially compromising user security and, um, and, and crowd control safety. But as humans, we can't do everything. All of these use cases could be done by a human, right? I could just sit in a chair, analyze video data, and count one, two, three, four, five, six. This is how many people are online. But unfortunately, humans require sleep. So using all these human hours to manually count how many people are in line or uh, seeing if there's actually an elephant in the field um, with my own two human eyes, that takes a lot of time and a lot of money. So if we can be in the environment without actually having to physically be there, um, that's really great in terms of saving money, saving time in the um, time of our humans who are working on our products and also uh, decreasing the amount of money that we have to spend. So making sure that we have devices in the field that can be up close in action to the elephants or the poachers that are in the field or counting how many people online reduces the amount of time that we have to spend as humans in our own physical time and rather sending that off to the device to make these insights on its own. So sensors need to be more like us in order to do this. Um, when I say smart insights, I'm talking about um, all of the inferences that we can make, our human brain does uh, automatically. So machine learning is, is really quite simple in that it's just emulating what we can already do with our human brains. 
When I see an elephant, I know that's an elephant because my brain has determined that based on the patterns of things that I've learned over my life, that pattern of an, of an elephant is something that I can say, hey, that is an elephant. But machine learning at its core doesn't know what an elephant is. It just says, hey, that looks like it matches the representation of an elephant that I have been taught. Um, so how can I how can I use this information in the computer to emulate more of what the human brain can do? So there's infinite data points all around us. An elephant image is one example. There's also temperature, humidity data, environment data, counting how many people are in a crowd. There's so many different options. Um, so we can collect all that data. Um, but as I mentioned before, most of that data today is actually just thrown away because it's too expensive and too, too costly to send to the cloud to analyze all that data there. Um, and we don't have enough human brain power in order to do it all manually. So let's put it onto the device and do embedded ML to determine these things rather than um, having a human do it or having a human sit in the field and watching these elephants. Um, let's give it to the device and do it on the edge um, and, and further decrease our cost and bandwidth and power constraints. So machine learning uh, helps you find the rules. Uh, in normal programming, we're looking at things like taking the input data, having an established set of rules, and then sending the outcome. For example, this could be when the temperature increases over 70 degrees Celsius, send that information to the cloud uh, about the time that that's, that's occurred. That's normal programming. In machine learning, I'm looking at something like, I know the input, I know the output that I want, so, Machine learning helps us find the rules. The input could be any other type of sensor data, and the outcome could be any type of pattern that you want to analyze in your sensor data. And then the rules are coming from the combination of those two things. And we'll discuss that more in the later slides when I talk about various use cases that you can do use with your data. So there's lots of endless use cases here of what we can do with our machine learning data. As I mentioned before, things with the elephant, uh, image, image recognition of people in standing in line, uh, and even environmental condition data. There's endless use cases with all the sensor data as well. So here's a few different images of various cats doing other things like recognizing sounds. Um, based on the microphone audio input from the, from the cat's meow, I can recognize um, if it's actually a cat that's meowing or if it's some, somebody saying hello. I can recognize sounds. I could classify various images. So I could have images of cats and images of dogs, and I could use embedded machine learning to recognize whether there is a cat or a dog in the photo, all on the edge. I could do biosignal analysis of various input sensors um, for like ECG data or um, sleep quality analysis, like we saw at the Aura Ring. I could detect abnormalities in things like vibration data for if I have a washer or dryer and I can put a microcontroller on the washer, I can analyze the vi incoming vibration signals from the accelerometer and determine whether the washer or dryer is about to fail. And then I can also do object detection on the edge as well. Uh, and this is sort of what we were discussing with the person detection in analyzing how many people are in a crowd. I could use object detection on the edge to count how many people are in the crowd, or I could determine things like that's a cat toy and that's a cat. And all of this can be done on the edge. And any of these use cases can be accomplished with messy high resolution sensor data. So as long as you have a lot of data coming into your device, you can usually do embedded machine learning with it. And thus embedded machine learning was born. So running on the device is key. And like I said before, sending all of this raw data into the cloud and analyzing it there usually costs a lot of time, a lot of power, a lot of money, and a lot of bandwidth. So instead of sending all this raw data into the cloud, we want to make sure it's all on the device. Uh, and running on the device means that we need to have a microcontroller that is, is capable of doing and making these insights, making these smart insights and pattern recognitions directly on the edge. So, machine, so Edge Impulse is the complete machine learning solution. Um, Edge Impulse helps you create your data set to, based on your use case, from helping you upload your data and, and label your data set to determine things like, is there a cat or is there a dog in an image? Then helps you design and train your Impulse or your machine learning algorithm. So based on all the data that you've uploaded into the Edge Impulse platform, we can help you design and train your algorithm to determine whether there's a cat or a dog in the image. 
Then we can also test your machine learning algorithm to say, hey, this will actually perform quite well in real life based on the test data that you have uploaded. And then finally, we also help you to deploy your model to the edge um, from anything from a, an officially supported microcontroller that we have um, to any other device that you have as well, as long as it has enough um, um, memory constraints. And then we also have a bunch of different tools in order to help you deploy your model uh, into production on your device. So we have the Eon Tuner, which is great because this is basically an ML, auto ML platform that takes your data and designs an ML algorithm based on the data that you have uploaded. So you don't need to know anything about machine learning or ever get started with Edge Impulse because we can help you every step of the way, even from designing your ML algorithm. We also have the Eon Compiler, which takes your model and makes it 25 to 55% smaller compared to normal TensorFlow Lite micro models. And if you know anything about TensorFlow Lite, this just basically just means we have a special compiler that we designed for the Edge Impulse Studio that reduces the size of your model, uh, takes out any various uh, things that are not needed by the model and throws them out. And then we have the smallest model as possible. Um, so it can be run on really small devices like a Cortex M0, basically devices that are super, super small, don't have a lot of memory or compute um, processing power. So moving back on, um, now that I know all this information, I know the power of embedded machine learning, um, I sort of have an idea of what I want my use case to be. How do I get started with data collection? Um, and like I said before, Edge Impulse is a complete ML ops solution. So we can take care of every single aspect of that um, way, for, way for you. Um, but data collection is the number one most important step of embedded machine learning. So embedded machine learning, um, in terms of evidence edge impulse, I've already spoken about quite, about a, quite a few use cases, but we have three main verticals that we think about in terms of our industrial use cases. We have our predictive maintenance vertical, asset tracking and monitoring, and human interfaces. So predictive maintenance, um, in this vertical, we're looking at things like taking motion, current, audio, and camera data to analyze things like um, worker safety on a factory line or determining food quality assurance on another factory line, for example. And this could be applied in, in many industries like manufacturing, home appliances, infrastructure, and even utilities. For asset tracking and monitoring, we're thinking about having a device that's on a package, for example, and using the motion, temperature, humidity, position, audio, or camera data, we can determine if where the package has been um, on its journey from one factory to the next or one um, center to the other. So we could look at things like based on the accelerometer data that the computer on the package has, has collected, we can determine how many times the package has fallen over onto its side, um, ensuring product quality. And this is great for logistics, infrastructure, building management, and even agriculture. And then finally, we're looking at human interf interfaces as well. And again, these are all just example sensors, but we have things like motion data, camera data, ECG data, audio and PPG data. And all of this data can be used in order to identify things in our environment based on our human interfaces. So things like the aura ring, um, based on all the sensors on the aura ring, we can determine your sleep quality. Um, and these are all human interfaces or things that we can interact with as a human in order to establish embedded ML insights. And this is great for the health industry, um, especially for nurses and people who are needing these health insights in order to become healthier in daily day-to-day -day life or elderly people who want to, we want to make sure that um, are people who are in high risk groups that they need to do hand washing analysis to make sure that they're, they're getting the highest level of care that they need in their environment. And we can also see these things in safety in automotive and other consumer industries as well. So now that we sort of selected our use case, um, we need to pick a sensor. And essentially you can choose any sensor that you want as long as there's some sort of, um, you know, as long as it's on the market. As long as you can purchase it online, you can most likely, and then collect data from it, there's most likely a way uh, you can use embedded machine learning with it. And there's tons of different sensors out there. This is just a, a, a short list, but we have quite a few examples already of embedded machine learning that uses accelerometer data for things like gesture recognition or fall detection, as I mentioned before, microphone for things like hello world keyword spotting. Um, if you know things like um, Google and Siri, um, those all use embedded machine learning for keyword spotting on the edge using microphone audio data. 
Temperature data can be used to determine things about your environment, um, and especially in combination of other types of environmental sensors like humidity sensors. Um, this could be great for a, an application to determine whether you're inside or outside, for example. Um, embedded machine learning can say, hey, based on where this device is, I can, are you the, the person who is holding this device is inside a house versus outside in the world? So there's tons of different options. As long as you select, select your sensor and think about what you want your um, outcome to be, uh, embedded machine learning can usually find a pattern to help you do that. So the first thing you need to do is collect your data samples. And I will show this in the live demo after we finish these slides up, but uh, Edge Impulse helps you all the way from collecting your data down to deploying it back onto your device, the model. So first you need to collect your data samples. Um, in this case today, we'll be looking at a use case of determining whether the object in the camera sensor is an apple or an orange. Um, so we'll be taking the image um, camera on your phone or on your microcontroller like a Sony's Presence and determining whether there is an apple or an orange in frame. So we need to collect a bunch of images of apples and oranges and upload them to our project um, with the label apple or orange in order to get started on our embedded machine learning algorithm. So <clears throat> Edge Impulse can help you take all these images, directly upload them into your project, and label them accordingly. High quality labeled data sets is really important for a strong machine learning algorithm. So we want to make sure we get this part right, and Edge Impulse can help you do that. And I'll show you more in the live demo. So here's some other um, just different demos and use cases for what I'll be showing you today. Today we'll be looking at image classification, which is what I show you here on the slide. Um, but today we'll be looking at apples versus oranges, but other great examples of image classification with embedded machine learning include intact versus cracked eggs, and even things like forest fire detection. I could take the input from a camera sensor on a device in a California forest, always be taking pictures and not having to upload them to the cloud anywhere, and based on the incoming images, determine whether there's a forest fire about to occur um, from a trained uh, machine learning model that I've already deployed onto that device in the forest. Um, so it's really great, especially for um, early detection of forest fires, which could save a lot of lives and a lot of money from all the insurance costs. So object detection is another thing that we can do on the edge. Um, today, again, we'll be looking at image declassification, but object detection is very similar. It does require a bit more processing power, which I'll discuss more um, in the demo. But you could use a camera on a Raspberry Pi or a Linux device to do real-time object detection. Um, you can basically take bounding boxes of all the images that you've uploaded into Edge Impulse and say, this object is a soap bottle, or this object is a toothbrush, toothpaste or a toothbrush. Um, and basically have your device on the edge determine what objects are in the frame and where exactly the bounding boxes or the squares are around your um, objects in the frame. And this is great for things like toiletries object detection, which could be awesome for a factory line example. We could also do things like animal identification. Uh, is there a dog or a cat in frame and where is it in the frame? And then you can also do human versus animal as well. Um, and this could be great for things like wildlife conservation or um, detecting when poachers are, are coming as well. So gesture recognition is another example um, that's uh, great for things like with accelerometers or Doppler radar. Um, you can take the incoming data from your accelerometer or Doppler radar sensor and determine what gesture you're actually doing with the device. Um, so this could be great for different various human interfaces. You could use embedded machine learning to say, hey, when I'm waving my device back and forth, I want my then computer to do X, Y, and Z. Um, this is another great example of embedded machine learning for that. Um, accelerometer data could, for example, detect when someone is about to fall or someone has already fallen and alert the nurses in the facility to come help them. You could also do hand washing analysis, especially in the day, in the age of COVID, hand washing is really important. So you could use um, accelerometer on a device, on a, on a wristwatch, for example, to determine the quality of someone's hand washing um, based on the amount of vibration that has been coming in from the accelerometer sensor. You can also do things like exercise detection. I could put an accelerometer with a microcontroller in my shoe and determine when I'm doing various exercises like pushing push-ups or jumping jacks or other device, other exercises. 
And then finally, we've already spoken a little bit about audio cue responding as well, um, but Google and Apple already have um, embedded machine learning in their um, devices as well. Siri is using embedded machine learning on the edge to detect when you're saying, hey, Siri. And it's the same for Google. Um, so this is great for things like home automation or, or even detecting when your faucet is leaking. Based on the incoming audio data, embedded machine learning can determine, hey, that sounds like your faucet is dripping um, and it could alert you to go help go fix your faucet. So now that we have all these great use cases, how do we actually, and now that we have all this uploaded data that's labeled and it's really high quality, how do I take all of that labeled data and make a machine learning model from it? So from, from model to device to cloud, um, this is actually a relatively difficult process. Again, extracting these raw data, extracting these features, doing the signal processing on it and training your model. This is the hard part that Edge Impulse completes for you. So we take our raw data and in order to get the model as small and efficient as possible, we're, we're gonna do some signal processing on the data in order to extract the most meaningful features. Um, for this could be various digital signal processing algorithms um, for images. This could be, you know, making the image from RGB to black and white and then extracting the most key points of the image in various pixels. Or this could be taking audio data and putting a, a low pass or high pass filter over it and then determining, hey, of this filtered audio incoming stream, what is the most important peaks and valleys of the audio data and then taking those most important peaks and valleys or most important pixels of the image and sending those into our machine learning model and training on those most important features. And then that's what we then deploy the device. Uh, signal processing is really key for machine learning because we wanna make sure that our model is the most fast and efficient it can be. And signal processing is something that we've been doing for years, even before meta machine learning. So signal processing is really robust in helping clean up our incoming raw data and getting it as close as possible to what we want our model to recognize um, or how we want our model to make these smart insights on whether there's an elephant in the field or whether my cat is meowing into the uh, microphone or not. So this first part, getting that raw data, labeling it, training it on those extracted meaningful features, that's pretty hard. But I'll just show you uh, after these slides that the Edge Impulse Studio takes care of that whole thing for you um, in, in a relatively simple way. So now that we've got the model trained, we then want to deploy it to our device. So there's a bunch of different ways that Edge Impulse can help you deploy to your device. Um, the most common way that we have for um, people who are using Edge Impulse, they deploy via the C++ library. And this C++ library contains all of the source code, all the digital signal processing code, all of the model inferencing information that you need in order to start um, analyzing new raw data directly on your device and running those inferences on the edge. So it includes all your signal processing, all your machine learning model code, and then it collects the conclusion based on the output um, of your trained model. And then you can send that conclusion of the model to the cloud or do whatever else you want with it. For example, for home automation, you could turn on the lights based on various gestures. So the impulse design page is the bread and butter of how we're going to be designing and training our model in the Edge Impulse Studio. Um, every flow of the Edge Impulse impulse design page is very similar. Um, the, this first part of your raw data changes depending on what you've uploaded to the data acquisition tab, which I'll show you in a moment. But this first uh, column here is the image data tab. Um, and this, this raw data section is basically just cleaning up your data, making sure it's all the same size. Um, and for this example, we're looking at images. So it's squashing all of the images down to make sure they're all square or however you've determined you want your height, image height and width. This white column here is the signal processing block. Um, Edge Impulse includes lots of pre-written signal processing code for you to use on your raw data. And the signal processing code is again important because it basically makes your model have less information to train on, um, which is important because these microcontrollers are, are really small and they need to be as efficient as possible. So the signal processing basically takes all of my image data, raw image data, cleans it up, makes it either from black and white or color, and then picks out the most important pixels or most important information of each image and passes that onto our machine learning block. And this block here, again, will change depending on the type of machine learning algorithm you want to do. 
But because of the, in this screenshot and the demo that I'll be showing you today is for images, right now it's a transfer learning block. And these columns, again, are just a GUI representation of a Python snippet that we have available for you for free to use in Edge Impulse. So this is using TensorFlow and Keras, and it's basically a Python code that is wrapped up in a, a GUI format. So it makes it really easy for people who don't necessarily know how to write Python code to extract meaningful information and insights from their raw sensor data. And then finally, we have our, third, our fourth column, our output features. Based on all the raw information that I've uploaded and trained on for my machine learning model, these are the three things that I want my model to um, conclude. I want my model to say, hey, in this image, there is an apple, or there is an orange, or there is none of the above, unknown. So these are the three conclusions or predictions that I want my model to spit out. And then I can do whatever else I want with this information, either send it to the cloud and do some insights there, or do further insights on my, my microcontroller by doing other things, again, like turning on and on the light, or um, alerting me that I need to buy more apples, things like that. So deployment to your Edge device is also key, um, but the studio makes this a, very easy for you again as well. We have quite a few devices that are already officially supported in Edge Impulse, all the way from a Cortex-M0 Plus device, where you can do things like anomaly detection, sensor classification of things like accelerometer or temperature data, um, small examples like that, all the way into a Jetson Nano, which is a, basically a Linux device that you can do things like video classification and object detection on really um, high resolution, massive data. Um, so depending on the device that you've chosen, um, really at this point in time will dictate what type of embedded machine learning model you can use. So today, since we're doing um, an image classification um, use case, we can do things with like an Arduino Nano Cortex M4, M7 Plus. Um, because image data is high, high resolution, um, we need to have a device that can handle processing this image data. But as we'll see in the future, these restraints, um, these constraints of these devices um, dictating what types of machine learning models we can do are constantly evolving and changing. Um, soon, we'll probably be able, be able to do image classification on Cortex-M0+, plus um, with all the advances that we're doing in the machine learning community. So again, this is just a slide that we have quite a lot of supported hardware. Um, and what we mean by supported hardware is essentially we have the ability to um, click on a board that you have for your uploaded data and trained your model. You can click on a board that has the compatible sensor and directly download and flash a proof of concept pre-built binary firmware onto the board that runs Edge um, AI without, you having, without having to write any code yourself. Um, so you can flash this firmware and get started with Edge AI in a matter of just a few minutes. Um, but we also have a whole different other um, slew of libraries that you can download to do your inferencing. Um, for example, we have a C++ library that again is open source. Um, nothing in Edge Impulse is black box. So you get all of that inferencing code, the signal processing code, all that is available in the C++ library that you can use to then integrate into your embedded application as you would with other C++ projects. And you can run that on any device, anything from a MacBook down to a Cortex-M0+, um, as long as you can compile a C++ library. Then we also have things like Arduino library, a WebAssembly library for running things in your um, JavaScript application in your web browser. We also have um, the ability to deploy to your Linux devices via CLI application, OpenMV, and STM QVI Simsys packs. So we have a lot of options for you um, in case you don't have one of the officially supported boards that you see there on the left. Um, and you can also view all of our officially supported boards on our website, on our documentation website uh, at docs.edgeimpulse.com. Because there's quite, quite a few of them and it's, it's growing every day. So the flow of deploying to our microcontroller uh, or Sony's presence in this example is we're going to deploy our trained model to our device, analyze uh, the incoming new raw sensor data based on that trained model. And based on the results of our trained model and, um, and, and incoming new real life data, um, we're going to then collect more data upload to the Edge Impulse platform, continue refining our model until we have something that works really well for our circumstances or where the device is located in, in real time and in the field. And this is really easy to do with the Edge Impulse deployment tools and with our proof of concept binaries. 
because data is most is the most important thing with embedded machine learning. As long as you have a really high quality data set, your embedded machine learning algorithm is going to be really nice as well. But data is super important. So again, um, as we'll see in the live demo, you can click on the Sony Expressence or any other board that has a compatible sensor that you've uploaded with your data, directly build that, download it, and flash it onto your device um, in a matter of a few moments. Again, here's your C++ library and Arduino library, an example of the optimizations that we have from the EON compiler, which is essentially reducing the amount of memory used from the um, Edge Impulse SDK that you down, download from anything from you know, 25 to 55% of what you would get if you compiled the same exact model using the TensorFlow like micro compiler. And then we also have the option to do quickly do deployments to your mobile phone. If you're doing image data or audio data, this is really awesome because you can directly do um, machine learning on the edge on your phone without having to write any code. The model is essentially sent to your phone web browser, built and downloaded, and then you can classify brand new data and analyze whether there's an apple or an orange in the image um, directly on the edge without having to write any code, and it's all in your web browser on your phone. Um, so it makes rapid prototyping of your machine learning model and assuring it's working uh, in your with in your real life environment um, really quite really fast and easy and i'll show you that in our demo so how do you get started well edge impulse is free to use just go to edgeimpulse.com and sign up for an account and if you scan the qr code on our homepage, you can get started building a model in five minutes and you can also check out our coursera course with sean himmel it's a really great course for you to get started from bottom to top. How, how do I, what is embedded machine learning? Um, and it goes pretty deep dives into that and uh, gives you a more deeper understanding of what I just talked about today in this webinar. So I recommend checking that out. And then we'll go into the demo. Adam, do you still see my screen? Okay, so I'm just assuming this is still working, but essentially this is the Edge Impulse um, Studio. After you've created an account and logged into the Edge Impulse platform and created a project, this is what this page will look like. So for every Edge Impulse project, this will, is, it's sort of equivalent to one embedded machine learning use case. So the use case that we'll be looking at today is apples versus oranges with an image camera sensor. So, <clears throat> This, the dashboard helps you step-by-step step, all the way from data collection to designing and training your model, testing your model and verifying that it will work with real life data and deploying your model. All this can be uh, helped via tutorials that we have linked on the dashboard here. So here's where I get information about how I can collect my data, how I can start, start doing things like continuous motion recognition or adding sight to my sensors and how I can actually finally deploy. Here, I can also add collaborators if I'm in an Edge Impulse um, enterprise organization. I can also see how many items I have uploaded to my project. And then I also make my project public and share this project on things like social media or with my colleagues so they can clone this entire project with all of their data, all of the intermediate, intermediate machine learning models and deployment information to their own account so they can refine the model to their own tastes. So the devices tab is where I can connect various microcontrollers and things like my phone to my project so I can directly upload data and start making my machine learning um, algorithm. Today, I am going to connect my phone and I'm gonna start uploading new data that way. Um, in this case, it's really, really simple. All I have to do is I have to go to the devices tab and the top right here, all I have to do is click connect a new device, click show QR code over use your mobile phone. And I'm going to click show. I'm going to get my phone, open my camera app on my phone. And I need to make sure that my screen share. Need to add the screen share of the QuickTime player. Okay. So 
now that I've scanned the QR code on my phone, I've opened up a web portal that allows me to take new camera images and upload them to my project. So the data acquisition tab shows me all the data that I've already uploaded into my Edge Impulse project. Um, the use case today that we're looking at is apples versus oranges. So unknown is any image that contains no apples and no oranges, or I could be looking at images that have apples in them or images that just have oranges in them. An unknown is anything that is not an apple or an orange. So in order to upload new data, I have connected my phone via the QR code on the devices tab. I'm now going to click collecting images and it's going to ask for permission to my phone's camera. And then I can take a picture I can label the image as Apple, select the category as split, that's fine. And then I can take a picture of an Apple. And it's been automatically uploaded to my Edge Impulse project. And I can keep doing this for my all my apples and all my oranges and any other unknown images. And this is a great way to collect a really robust, high quality labeled data set in no time at all. So I'm collecting all this data directly from my mobile phone, but I can then deploy um, this, this model that I've trained with images taken from my phone directly to my controller. So the source of your images and the source of your sensor data doesn't necessarily matter um, in order to make a high quality, um, really high accurate model um, to perform on any other type of microcontroller, but I'll explain more in a second. So I've uploaded all of my apple and orange images and I have a pretty good um, split here. I want to make sure that I have about an 80 to 20% training and testing data split. The training data is what I'm going to be using to train my machine learning model on. And the test data is what I'm going to be using to verify that my machine learning model works as intended. Um, this is basically all the, all the information, all the images that my model has not seen before, and it'll help us determine you know, whether our model will work well in the field. So moving on to the impulse design, now that I have all of my uploaded labeled images for determining whether there's an apple or an orange in frame, I'm going to again do what I described in the slides and design my impulse. So on the left here, we've already have our raw image data. We have our image data. We're squashing all the images to make sure that the same size. Uh, at 96 by 96 pixels. I then have my Im image signal processing block here, which extracts all the meaningful features from my raw image data. So this is a pre-written processing block that contains a Python snippet that does various signal processing code for you. All of these are freely available for you to use with an edge impulse. And all of this code will then be um, available for you to see and use in the exported deployed library at the end um, in the source code that you can use to implement into your embedded application. So today, because we're doing image classification on apples versus oranges, I'm going to select the image block. And this um, pre-processes and normalizes all the image data and you can optionally reduce the color depth, um, basically taking it from color to black and white. But I have a bunch of other pre-written blocks here available for things like audio data, spectral analysis, for accelerometer data, for example. And I can also use um, my machine learning model with raw data and not having to do any more um, extracting of meaningful features. I just use the data as it comes. And we can also do that in Edge Impulse. I can also write my own custom block if I know how to write Python code and use Docker. Um, we have tutorials for that on our website. So if you have any other custom digital signal processing that you want to do on your raw data in Edge Impulse, you can do that as well. Um, you just have to write your own custom block and all of that information is on our documentation. The purple block is where we're doing our neural network or, or our machine learning algorithm training. Um, so we're using a transfer learning block here for images. And these are pre-written blocks, again, that are written and available for you to use in Edge Impulse. And we also recommend blocks depending on the type of raw data that you've uploaded on your data acquisition tab. So today we're going to be using the transfer learning block. Um, but other types of data, you can also see other types of learning blocks here, like anomaly detection for things like um, accelerometer data for gesture detection, for example, um, and various other blocks as well. But today we'll be doing transfer learning because we want to determine what is in the image. 
And then our output features over here on the right, apples, oranges, and unknown. We save that in, as our output. And then these are the conclusions or the predictions that our machine learning model will be making based on our new incoming raw data. So our image tab here, this is where, again, we're pre-processing and normalizing our data and extracting these features to then send into our machine learning model um, to train on. So our raw features are all the basically the hex values of our image. We'll be may, remain keeping the image um, after it's been processed as color, but I can also select this to grayscale and the process features will change. I can also see the on-device performance of how much time it'll take on our device that we have chosen. In this case, this example is estimating our on-device performance time for a Sony Spresens microcontroller. So based on the computing processing power and memory available on that board specifically, um, this digital signal processing block for image data will take about five milliseconds of processing time and four kilobytes of RAM which is really quite quick, um, which means the, the, the Sony Expressence is a great board for image classification as well. So now that we've done the image tab, we are going to go and click on our generate features. And Edge Impulse has this great tool that can really help you make sure that you have a high quality labeled data set. Um, and making sure that our data set is really um, labeled accurately as well. Because if we have a data set that has images that are mislabeled, our resulting algorithm or a resulting machine learning model will not perform or behave in the way that we expect. So all of our training samples are up, have been uploaded and labeled here. Um, and we've generated our features, meaning we've extracted all of the meaningful pixels from each image. And we sort of mapped it onto a 3D visualization here on the right. So of all the samples that we've uploaded, um, based on an algorithm that we've passed these extreme extracted meaningful features to, We've mapped it onto a 3D feature explorer where we can see every single sample and where it is in correlation to other samples. And how is it, how is our machine learning model going to take this information and, and, and map it onto these new patterns that we want to find uh, and these new insights. So I can click on each individual sample here and determine which image that came from. And you can sort of see, there's not a lot of images in this data set, but you can sort of even start to see a little bit of a clustering um, of these features. So unknown um, and oranges and apples, there's a quite a distinct separation, which means that our machine learning model, model is already probably going to perform quite well. Um, but there are use cases where this a feature explorer doesn't perform, um, sorry, doesn't look quite as nice as this clustering here, um, where it could just look like a cloud of jumbles of different dots. That doesn't mean our machine learning model is going to behave badly. It just means that the machine learning model will need to take, take a little bit more effort in order to train to find the patterns. Moving on to our transfer learning block. This is the block where we basically design and train our machine learning model um, with various different architectures and layers for our neural network. So I've set my number of training cycles here. I've set my learning rate. And I've also toggled on data augmentation, which helps me to transform my data during training to prevent overfitting of my model. Uh, I also have various neural network architecture layers here that I can drag and drop uh, in a GUI format um, without having to write any Python code, which you would normally have to do if you were training and designing your model with um, TensorFlow um, or Keras on your own um, and not an Edge Impulse. So today I've selected a mobile net um, V2 architecture model. And I just clicked on the model and I can choose other types of models if I want something that needs that uses a little bit less RAM or ROM. Um, I can select that here. And then all I have to do um, without having to write any code is click start training. Um, and this basically takes all of our extracted meaningful features from our digital signal processing um, tab and takes them and trains a model to to recognize those patterns that we want to see in our data. Is there an apple or an orange, or is there neither an apple and orange in our image, in our up incoming image? So we've trained and built our model, and we can see on the right here our model performance output. So we have 100% accuracy for identifying when there's an apple in frame, which is great. Our oranges, though, is only 77% accurate compared to our actual label versus predicted label of the trained model. 22% of the images that we have trained our model on um, were actually predicted to be Apple, but they were really containing a 
orange. So this might mean that we need to upload more data in order to further help the model um, signify whether there's an apple or an orange in frame or not. So that's easy enough, but for today's use case, 94% accuracy is quite good. Um, and as I determine if I want to deploy this into production on my production level device, I can further increase the performance by adding more data. And this is what we call data-driven engineering. Further increasing the quality of our data set and will we'll, we'll also result in the um, increase of performance and accuracy of our more trained machine learning model. So I can also see the feature explorer of the extracted meaningful features of the DSP block that I have for my data that I trained, or this is the validation set that has been selected from the training, <clears throat> training data set to validate my machine learning model's accuracy. And I can see, I can click on each individual sample here, determine where that sample is from. And since the red one right here, this one was mispredicted to be in orange, but it's actually unknown. I can understand why, because there is an orange flower in frames so that can be quite confusing. I would need to upload more data in order to help my machine learning model further signify that that's not actually an orange, that's something else. And then finally, I can see the on-device performance here. Um, these values will change depending on the device that I've chosen on the Edge Impulse dashboard. Um, and today we're, we're estimating for Sony's presence. And the inferencing time is the amount of time it takes to get from the extracted features to an output conclusion. Um, so this will change depending on the amount of computer processing power that I have on board my microcontroller or my Linux device. And then I also can see the peak RAM usage and the flash usage. Um, and these values of memory usage will change depending on the type of neural network architecture that I've chosen and other various things uh, of different signal processing um, uh, algorithms. Moving on, now that I have trained my model, 94% is looking really good. Um, I now want to test my model and make sure that it looks good for my real life data or my test data set. So I can move on to either the live classification page or the model testing page. The model testing page basically takes all of my test data set and runs it through my trained machine learning model and then outputs the predicted label um, based on the expected outcome that I have labeled on each sample. So I just click classify all. I extract all the features from each test sample. And then pass them through my trained model and I should get a expected result or predicted result. Now, some of these were considered to be uncertain. The model could not determine what was actually in the image, whether it was an orange apple or unknown. Um, and we can see these here on the feature explorer specifically for the test set. Um, a red dot means that the sample was mispredicted. And I can also see again, you know, which sample it was, and I can view the sample and view the classification on its own and see all the intermediate data for the specific sample and why it was classified the way it was. In this case, it was misclassified. So it's, it's really close to being classified as an orange. It's 0.64 um, accuracy, but it was just, just not close enough in the threshold of what we consider to be a accurate um, guess or not. And those, all of these um, information on what is considered accurate can be changed in the impulse design pages. So now that I have a really good um, functioning project and I like the way it's performing on my real life data or my test set, I can also version my project to can basically snapshot my entire project in Edge Impulse at its current point in time. So all of my data that I've uploaded to the data acquisition tab um, gets all saved. All of the labels that are at its current point in time gets zipped up into a zip file. Um, all of the impulse design intermediate model information, all the neural network architecture, all the signal processing extracted features all get zipped up into a zip file. And I can go back to that zip file at any point in time. Um, I can upload new data. I can add a new label. I can add another type of fruit. Um, and say I don't like that new model, I can always go back to this old model and start from there again. So project versioning is a really valuable tool um, for data-driven engineering because I really want to be constantly up adapting and improving upon my data set that I've uploaded into Edge Impulse um, and thus improving my machine learning model. So I can also make my project public from here as well. 
And again, you can share this public pro project with your colleagues on social media or, or just with um, or just privately, and they can clone that into their Edge Impulse account and adapt on the data that you've already uploaded, you know, change some neural network architecture information around, write some Python code if they want, um, all on their own Edge Impulse account based on the data that you've uploaded. Finally, deployment to your Edge device. Um, Edge Impulse makes this really easy as well. For most people, they'll be selecting the C++ library. And this is an open source library that contains all of the code that you need in order to get started doing your embedded application development with your trained model, your digital signal processing code, and um, other things like that. And it can be compiled with any modern C++ compiler. It has no third-party dependencies. I choose the Arduino library a lot as well because we have a lot of officially supported boards or boards that are not officially supported but are supported by the Arduino IDE. I can directly import an Arduino library into the IDE and get started doing inferencing on the edge using various Arduino um, driver code as well. Today, um, and most often for people who are developing with Edge Impulse with an officially supported board, um, this page will change depending on the type of sensor data that I've uploaded onto my data acquisition tab. Today, today because I have uploaded image data, I have only seen boards that are officially supported with image sensors on board. So these pre-built firmers are essentially proof of concept applications that I could directly drag and drop or flash onto my microcontroller. And you can get started um, inferencing and classifying images directly on the edge without having to write any code. So I could select the Sony Suppressants if I wanted to, scroll down all I have to do in order to get a binary to drag and drop and flash is click build. Today, in order to classify on the edge, I'll be going back to the devices tab, scanning that QR code, and then building and, and deploying my model directly into the web browser of my mobile phone. So, <clears throat> and then just to finish on this page, this bottom area is where I can see all the optimizations that the Eon compiler is doing um, with this image classification model. So without the Eon compiler, my quantized int8 model goes from <clears throat> 7743, 7, 774.3k 7, 7, flash and 440k ROM goes down from that to 585k flash, 297k RAM. So the Eon compiler is really a valuable tool in order to get the most out of the memory that's on your device that you've selected. Um, and again, these will change depending on the type of model architecture that you've chosen and digital signal processing code that you've chosen as well. So I'm, now I'm going to go back to the devices tab, click on connect to your device, and use my normal phone. And I'm going to open up the camera application on my phone, scan the QR code, open it in my web browser, and now my phone is connected. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of my phone, click on switch to classification mode, give access to the camera, and now I can directly classify new images on the edge without having to write any code using edge impulse uh, by deploying from the studio. So you can see I'm taking brand new images in real time, taking, uploading them, not uploading them. This is directly on the edge in my web browser on my phone. It has taken an image and correctly identified that there's an apple in the image. And now we're doing machine learning directly on the edge without having to write any code using edge impulse. And now I will hand it back over to Adam. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jenny. This is really good. Can you see me? Yep. Great. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed it. This was really extensive. And Jenny really showed you how anybody can do this really hands on. Um, it's actually something that was previously extremely hard to do, very complex. They had special skills. And you got to the point that almost everybody can do it. Um, so in uh, conclusion, to close our presentation, I will share the screen again. As Jenny mentioned, you can go today to edgeimpulse.com. And if you scroll down just a little bit on our homepage, you will see that the last year's um, 
QR code, which you can actually scan right now with your phone. You don't even have to register to Edge Impulse. You can just do this immediately on your phone without even registering and giving your email, should you not want to. Um, so try that out. And also, as Jenny mentioned, you can go to our docs area and really see all the um, all the boards that we officially support. We can work with any type of technology, but the boards that we officially support. And if you really want also to take um, that course that she had mentioned on Coursera, you can actually purchase one of these Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense and uh, try to do a lot more sophisticated stuff with this board by following the Coursera class. So that uh, really gives you all the instructions how to install uh, you know, the firmware and actually getting started and everything you need to know on uh, really becoming an embedded developer. So with that, I want to uh, thank everybody for your time, for spending some time with us here. Thank you, Jenny, for an amazing job as always. And we will uh, spend some time with you on a Q&A and uh, enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you. Thank you.